evening, Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Good evening, Body of Christ. Who is Alpha? Who is Omega? Who did you come to worship on this evening? Glory be to God. So on my way to service, I got a call from one of our mothers and she could open a pack of noodles to feed herself. So if you did not come to praise God for yourself on tonight, I hope that you could at least praise God for our elderly on tonight. I hope that you can put a hand clap of praise for our elderly for they have served faithfully and we honor God for them. We thank God for them. We do not take them for granted. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God for your elderly. Praise God for the time that they have served. Praise God for their prayers. Praise God for their steadfastness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. To see someone who can't open a pack of noodles or something to feed themselves, it makes you want to give God the glory because you can clap your hands. It makes you want to give God the glory because you can stump your feet. It makes you want to give God the glory because you have the activity of your limbs. How dare you come and sit down on God tonight when you can praise him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. And for that one who's sitting in their house and they're not able to praise God, we praise God for you on tonight. We give God the glory for you on tonight. We lift you up in the spirit and we ask the Holy Spirit to touch you according to his word. We are the walking Isaiah 53. I speak to mother hands and I command it to war as God has called it to. In the name of Jesus, I send a word that her hand be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. We don't take it for granted that we can use our hands. We don't take it for granted that we got soundness of mind. We don't take it for granted that we can walk into the house of God and give you the glory that is due your name. For you are worthy, God. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. You're worthy to be praised. In spite of what we've been through this week, God, you are worthy to be praised. When I look back at what you brought me out, you're worthy to be praised. You didn't have to choose me. You didn't have to choose me. All of us are called, but many, many are called, but few are chosen. If God has chose you in this season, you ought to be grateful. You ought to give God some glory. You ought to give God some praise because he could have left you out there, body of Christ, but he chose you. And that is enough to give him praise. Glory be to God. Who thank you, Jesus. I praise God all the way to church. I give God all the glory the whole way here. That ain't the only time I praise God. But to see something like that, I said, Lord, I thank you. I praise you. I barely could hold a steering wheel trying to clap my hand and drive at the same time. Because I give God the praise that is due his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. A word of encouragement for those that are still idle. Greetings, my brother. Count it all joy when ye have fallen into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entirely wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that he give it to all men, literally and unbraided not, and it shall be given to him. James 1, 1 through 5. If you do not know what to do, ask God. And if you desire to do something and you don't know how to do it, ask the Lord for wisdom and wait patiently for him to answer you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now we can pray. Hallelujah, God. Heavenly Father, thank you for your splendid glory. 
majesty you are in our sight, Lord God. Array us with your glory and beauty on tonight. We are so humble under your mighty hand, God, because we know that you will exalt us in due time in the mighty name of Jesus. For you are omnipotent, Lord God, all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-seeing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. That is why we lift you up on high on tonight. We magnify your name on tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for empowering us. We thank you for fueling us with wisdom on tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for your glory on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you that your word will accomplish as to where it's being sent on tonight. In the name of Jesus, if you believe in God for healing, we send the word of healing on to you right now. If you believe in God for a turnaround, we send the world that you would be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because when that mind is changed, everything is changed. Glory be to God. Impact us with your knowledge and your counsel, Holy Ghost. Give us strength like an eagle on tonight. For we know, Lord God, that you are the lifter up of our head. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father, for power and the authority in your son, great name. So with that power and authority, we annihilate the spirit of doubt because we know that your word has come to give us clarity and remove unbelief in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we're asking you to touch hearts on tonight. Renew minds, restore souls in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for favor with God and favor with man. Anybody need favor in this evening? Thank God in advance for it. Your Heavenly Father will give it to you if you ask him. Glory be to God. Thank you for advancement in the body of Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a change in all of our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for a word that will fall on good grounds. And Satan, who come as a thief, will steal it no more in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. We believe you, Lord God. We believe your word, Lord God. And we believe, Lord God, that as we capture the word, write it on the tables of our heart, that change will begin to take place in our life. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. Honor him in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. He told us to multiply, replenish, subdued, and to have dominion in his son name. And we're going to do just that at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. If you believe God, give God some praise on tonight. Glory be to God. We believe you, God. We believe you, Lord. We believe your word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Come on and continue to give God a praise in the house. This real simple song, sing like this. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are. Remember that song, Sing You Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. See, we worship you.
worship you, Lord. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, come on, just continue to worship God in the house. Prepare for the word, amen. Continue to worship, give God a high praise. He's Alpha and Omega. He is the author and the finisher. But it has to be faith put into the picture. Situation and circumstances do not always move God. For they are nothing new under the sun. And we serve an all-knowing God who knows all things. And he works all things after the counsel of his own will. We trust God and we believe God. We need God. We've got to a place in society where I believe that people forgot that we still need God. We still need God. I don't care. You can do all of the things you want to do to protect yourself, but without God, we're still out there. Somebody say, Lord, I need you. I, I'm going to... I'm not going to take much time. I, I'm not going to take much time prep, prepping you. I, I have a word from the Lord, and I'm going to I'm going to give that word tonight. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord, and I pray, Holy Spirit, administer to us. Minister to us. Teach us and preach to us. Guide and lead us tonight as we enter into a sacred time, a, a time of study, a, a time where we want to learn not only of Jesus Christ, not only be taught by your Holy Spirit, but to get to know God better. So God, I, I ask you to do it for Christ's sake. Do it for the sake of the gospel. Do it for us, God. God, we honor you right now, God, and we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. You may be seated. I move right into the word of God. There is a word from the Lord. And I want to give you a nugget before I start teaching. Many people critique and they try to say, well, you know, if he did a review, I could probably follow him better because he talks and he teaches so much and he puts out so much information. Again, hear me, please, and hear me with clarity. But I pray today that you'll hear me with the right spirit, that you'll honor God by listening to what's being told to you because there's a nugget in what's being said, but there's nothing for a lazy person. You can't follow me and be lazy. I ain't a student of the word. Therefore, you have to be a student of the word to follow me. But I'm not just a student of the word. I'm one who allows the word to become a part of him. Transformed by the word. Blessed by the word. Empowered by the word. Believe through the word move by the instructions of the word. And the only way you're going to do that, that nugget is for you to understand that C-O-T-P-O-H C-O-T P-O-H on YouTube. C-O-T P-O-H that stands for Conveyor of Truth Purveyor of Hope. C-O-T P-O-H Conveyor of Truth Purveyor of Hope. That's where you'll find my messages, just like what I'm going to teach tonight. Within 24 hours, it'll be there. And I want you to understand something. That I don't got you there because I'm trying to get some kind of boost or some kind of money. I'm guiding you there because you need to be able to review according to what God is saying. Because when you start trying to write notes while I'm teaching... You're not going to be able to write as fast as I'm going to teach. And you're not going to be able to finish your thought. But if you go back and take your time at home, you can hit pause all you want to and fill it in. 
In other words, what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to give you some ingredients for your spiritual gumbo. But I'm going to need you to go home and cook it. Is that all right? Because no two people like the same thing in their gumbo. Am I right? But we all need to eat the word of God. So as I teach you, and I, I want to teach tonight, overcoming obstacles. Overcoming obstacles. An obstacle is, is something that stands in the way. It's placed in an area sometimes just to slow progress or to be overcome. An obstacle can be something that's put in place to hinder. But as soon as the average Christian faces an obstacle, many give up. And, and I, I need you to pose a question to yourself. Did you even try to overcome your obstacle? You see, oftentimes we have tried things and they fail and we didn't get the intended outcome. We didn't get the expectation. We didn't get what we were looking for. Not understanding that God was giving us an exercise of faith. So it's important that you learn to be resilient. To have a resilient mindset to bounce back. Somebody said bounce, bounce back. To fight back. Right to get mind. the right mind, the right strength. Are you hearing me? The power to overcome. Just because you fail does not mean that that's the end of something. Just because it didn't materialize in your time frame or your window does not mean that God was not there. You see, resilience. Let's talk about resilience for a minute. Resilience is a concept that entails the capacity of a system, a community, or a society that is potentially exposed to hazards to adapt by resisting or changing in order to reach an acceptable level of functioning. Long definition, that's why you gotta go and review. Is that all right? But I'm giving you a, a, a sociological perspective. Is that all right? Make sure you're catching me right now in the right frame of mind. Uh, resilience says that, 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 that it helps us that go through these things because it increases our capacity for learning. And we learn from past disasters or failures to become better for the future. Are y'all hearing me? To be better for the future. Now, again, I'm, I'm giving you a sociological a aspect of it. That wasn't deep spiritual. Tell you that wasn't spiritual. So how do you overcome obstacles, Pastor Davis? One of the ways you overcome obstacles is by employing faith. So let's look at faith and, and then let's look at it from two different perspectives, if you will. First, let's look at it from a positive perspective. A positive faith perspective is this. That faith can be a bridge. <laughs> but also, a positive person understands that faith can also be an obstacle. <laughs> you know, it's a positive faith perspective will be this. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. Another positive faith perspective is without faith. It is what? Impossible to please God. So this tells me that there's a positive aspect to it. But then if I give you a negative negative faith perspective and I go to Luke the 22nd chapter verses 31 through 32 Jesus said Simon behold Satan desired to have you that he may what? Sift you as sweet. But I pray for you that your that your that your what? Hmm. That your faith fails not. You see, many people fail in faith because they don't know how to balance life. And a lot of times, they snare themselves through commitment 
Are y'all hearing me? Through commitment in the wrong people. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Proverbs 6, chapter verse 1 says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. In other words, he said you're snared with the words of your mouth if you become surety for a friend. That means co-signing in our language. If you co-sign for a friend, you're snared by that because the you know that as the co-signer, you carry the burden. <laughs> you carry the risk. And he said, you're snared by that. that. It doesn't matter what you say. You're, you're obligated by that which was snared. Now, I have a definition for a snare. And I, I, Billy Davis defined a snare as a tethered transgression that comes through association or familiarity. Did you see that? Tethered transgression that comes through association or familiarity. So now, you all going to be tested in your faith wall. And if you don't know how to stand in the faith test, you're going to fail. So as a believer, you come back to God and you begin to ask him questions. God, is this really fair what I'm going through? I wish I had real people up in here. God, is this fair or is this foul? Because when something is fair, it means that it has a, legit a legitimate precedence to it. But when something is foul, it can be called wicked and evil. Is it fair or foul that God allowed your faith to be tested? Because we have to know what faith is. Faith is a conduit. Somebody say a conduit for the promises of God. That's what faith is. Faith is a substance. Faith is confidence that is placed upon God. That his word fulfills itself. But how do we get to faith? Let's see what Paul said about faith when he wrote to the church at Rome. He wrote in Romans the 10th chapter beginning at verse 14 and we're going to go down through 17. Read. How then shall they call on him uh -huh. in whom they have not believed? How shall they what? Call on him in, in whom they have not what? Believed. Mm -hmm. And how shall they believe in him uh -huh. of whom they have not heard? Go ahead. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Somebody said job description. job description. Pastor David just got a what? A job description. My job description tells me that somebody needs to hear about Christ. Is that all right? As the minister of God, your job description tells you that somebody needs to hear about what? As a deacon and a deaconess, somebody that job description tells you that somebody needs to hear about what? But if you're not talking Christ, if you're not talking Christ, how can they believe? Am I right to teach you? I'm going to teach you tonight. Are you hearing me? See, because Paul, he wrote a, 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 a statement to the church at Corinth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18, he said, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which believe, or unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I don't have this cross up here because it's East, around Easter time or after Easter. This cross is here all the time. You just happen to see it tonight. Am I right? Because we're going to preach Christ crucified, my goodness. And when we preach Christ crucified, we allow the power of the Holy Spirit, the one who came down in his stead, to have power in our lives. Is that all right? Let me move back to Romans 10 so you can get understanding. Verse 15. And how shall they preach uh -huh. except they be sent? There was a man sent by God whose name was Billy Joe Davis Jr. Go ahead. As it is written, uh -huh. how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Uh-huh. And bring glad tidings of good things. Go ahead. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Uh -huh. For Isaiah said, uh -huh. Lord, who hath believed our report? So, and that's Isaiah for y'all that don't know it. He's saying, look, who really believed the report of the Lord? 
because today we struggle with it. There are many of you that's conflicted in your thoughts because your faith has waned and you don't believe that God wants you healed. So you stop praying for your healing. You stop asking God for your healing. There are many that, that, that their pockets are tight. But it, are the pockets tight because it's a faith test or are your pockets tight because you are practicing what Hagar told you would happen <laughs> when you withhold what's supposed to go to God. I got to continue to teach. Verse 17 is the emphatic verse that everybody likes to hear. Go ahead. So then faith cometh by hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Uh huh. And hearing by the word of God. So faith has to be personified. Uniquely yours. Somebody say uniquely mine. Faith has to be personified. But how can you personify faith if you don't believe that God still does the impossible? I believe that God does the impossible. I don't know if I, if I got any believers out there that believe God does the impossible. Come on, say it, say it, say God still specializes in the impossible. You see, faith is active. Faith is an active force. But it also requires actions. What happens is people don't understand that belief and faith are not always the same and they should not be used as interchangeable parts. Mm. You drive a car, most of you drive cars out there, I know you do. And in driving a car, there are four things that roll around to get you to where you're going, am I right? They'll call your what? Tires. Am I right? But a tire left to itself is nothing. Because the tire needs the rim. And the rim needs the hub. And the hub needs the brakes. So there's a whole lot of interchangeable parts that when you look at it, you just say, I got a flat tire. So when that one tire goes out, when it, when it goes flat, it didn't mean that the other components didn't work. But it did mean that until you fix the flat, the other components do not matter. And that's the way it is with faith. Many of you have had a flat tire when it comes to your faith. So you no longer pray. You no longer fast. You no longer believe God because you had a flat. Somebody say, you just had a flat. That's all it was, just a flat. What are you saying, Pastor David? How many times have you said I am old over saying I'm sick? Even with man, I, I feel like teaching tonight. I'm going to teach him. Matter of fact, I feel like teaching. Uh, even with man <laughs> and with our vehicles, I can have a flat tire. But I got AAA. And I got roadside assistance with my insurance. So even if I got a flat, man has always already made a way for me not to be stuck. But inconvenience. God did the same thing. For when you have a faith failure or a flat tire concerning your faith. No, no, you're not saying you're whole. You don't say it. I know you don't. I know you don't. As a matter of fact, it's more, more convenient and you get more sympathy if you say, oh, I'm just so bad. Oh, I feel so terrible. Oh. Uh -huh. And so after a while, you're glorifying the enemy because you're murmuring and complaining and still are saying, and with, I don't have that church yet, and with its stripes. You see, people are confused be, 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 because they don't understand what James was writing in the book when he said in James 2 and 14, what does it profit my brother though a man say he have faith and have not worth? Can his work, can his faith save him? And then he go to verse 17, he says, James 2 and 17, even so faith if it had not worked is dead, being alone. Faith requires corresponding actions. So I'm moving to try to get us to understand something, how to grow in this faith.
because the church needs the word. Tell you, you need the word. And the church needs understanding of that word. He said, my people are what? Destroyed. Help me out. Not knowing how to or when to or what to. You see, there's a different strategy for different needs. And you just think that you can just take faith, something that God gave you a measure of, and put it where you want to. Think about it. Think about it. I, I'm, I'm just trying to thank you Holy Spirit <laughs> it's just so good I'm trying to find a, a, a classic example that most of you all can relate to and uh, uh, I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna get in trouble for this but it's a funny to me because I <laughs> y'all seem to be getting a little tight but but uh, it's funny to me it's time for a joke <laughs> uh, most of y'all look like you drank kool-aid <laughs> <laughs> but if you just put sugar in water alone that just doesn't really do anything, does it? May help you if you crashed, I guess, but it really doesn't do anything for flavor. But if you buy a pack of Kool-Aid and you put Kool-Aid, sugar, and water together, oh, boy, you got something then, aren't you? I mean, it's not quite a Pepsi, but, you know, you got something going on with that. Am I right? Let me move back to teaching. Y'all okay? See, we can't just make things work the way we want them to work. We have to be able to work the processes that God gave us. And so what God did, he gave us his word. Somebody say his word. And what his word does, his word validates. It helps us to validate and authenticate his presence and who he really is although he gave us his Holy Spirit to teach us and we have him on the inside of us if we've been born again but tell you, you have to be born again so as believers what happens believers may have faith but they don't understand principles or can I use another word systems of operations they don't know when to pray or fast or praise all worship, all confess, all work, all take possession, all overcome. They get them out in the wrong order. You ever worked a job where it was it was very necessary that everything be in order? Huh? And you follow that protocol, am I right? But when it comes to God, you think you can tell him when you're going to fast. And because you fast, now you want to make faith work to bring the path of fast that you initiated that though you can dictate to God. Instead of asking the Holy Spirit, what should I do? But letting faith be in place to guide me because if you're fasting, you still got to have faith. If you're praying, you still got to have faith. Are you understanding me? If you're overcoming a barrier or an obstacle, you still must have what? But there's a problem in the church. And that problem is the ability to hear. You see, there's a word that, 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 that goes with hear, hearing in the Greek. And it means to be under hearing. In other words, you're under what you heard. You're controlled by what you heard. Real hearing places you. So then faith comes by hearing by the so the word of God is what is over you so you're under the word of God which means that you hear the word of God and you're not confused when foreign voices get in your ear. Am I making any sense? So you got to come under. If you're not in the word, not in the word. you have nothing to come yeah. under. Therefore, your hearing is dull. The book says in Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of thy word gives light. 
gives understanding to the simple. See, we're so dependent upon our natural ability to hear. But natural hearing is a prevalent sense. In other words, our natural hearing allows us to perceive, my goodness, without seeing. Did you hear me? Natural hearing will allow you to perceive without, without what? Seeing. Natural hearing allows you to what? Perceive without seeing. Give me an example, Pastor David. If a... <laughs> A cricket is in your house. You don't have to see the cricket to find them. Am I right? You start, you start listening for what? And that sound draws you because you were under the sound of the... So we know how to come under a sound in the natural... So it shouldn't be that big of a fight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, y'all hear me? Psalm 66. Uh, help us a little better to hear this. Go ahead, Jane. Psalm 66, verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's start there. Whoa, I feel like teaching. What did he say? Make a what? Joyful noise. Did he say make a noise? Joyful noise. What kind of noise? Joyful noise. What kind of noise? Joyful noise. So how can you come in here talking about you in praise and worship and you all downtrodden? How can you call your noise joyful when your heart is dreadful? When your emotions are empty? When you're moody and mad at somebody else? And then you want to come in here and talk, oh, that's my song right there. No, you're just being rhythmic. That's good. He says, make a what? Joyful a joyful noise. noise. Go ahead. Sing forth the honor of his name. Uh-huh. Make his praise glorious. So he tells us to make God's praise what? Glorious. Go ahead. Say unto God. Listen to that. You need to learn this verse, Psalm 66, 3. You need to learn this for your own hearing. So you'll know, say unto God, uh-huh. How terrible mm -hmm. art thou in thy work. Yes. Through the greatness of thy power. Through the greatness of thy power. Shall thine shall enemies, thine enemies submit, submit, themselves submit themselves unto thee. Unto thee. Oh, y'all hear me. Verse 4 says what? All the earth shall worship thee. All the earth shall worship thee. And shall sing unto thee, uh -huh. they shall sing to thy name, Salah. So when we make a joyful noise, because sometimes that's the reason you can't get your breakthrough. You made a noise, oh, that's good. but you were moaning. You were murmuring. You were complaining. You weren't joyful in your approach to God. You were just here out of either responsibility. Are you hearing me? You were here because you you didn't you didn't you didn't want to make a joyful noise because I, I tell you when we we have opportunity to get into the presence of God we ought to be what full of joy a joyful noise means that I'm full of what because I'm talking about a sound now because whatever sound comes from you shows your state of heart and it takes the right words to propel faith. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Most of you are familiar with the law of gravity. And the law of gravity helps to keep things what? Down. Am I right? So when you're down, you're submitting yourself to the law of gravity. Are you with me? I need to look at somebody and make them feel bad. Tell them when you're down, you submitted yourself to the law of gravity. What are you saying, Pastor Davis? What's really holding you down? <laughs> huh? But if you want to defeat that, there's another principle called the law of lift. And the law of lift defeats 
the law of gravity. So the psalmist knew that when he began writing in Psalm 24, verses 7 and 9, he, he said, lift your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and what? The king of glory shall come in. So he said, when you down, lift your head. And when you lift your head, the law of lift comes into play to pull you out of what you were in. Well, Y'all understand what God is saying? That the Lord is saying, and the only reason you're down trying to come, that you choose to stay there. He's not, see, you want him to just pick me up, Lord. Yeah, pick me up, you little boat. Pick me up, pick me up. I'm down, pick me up. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. No, employ the law of lift. Lift your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. I need you to point about three. We tell them, you going through something? You're going through something, and you're going through something, but it shouldn't hold you down. It should not keep you down. You should know who God is, and you should know that God is sending a word to tell you, look, the reason you're still down, because you don't want to employ faith. Because we're held down by our words. It's the words that we speak. By our words, we're just, by our words, we're justified. And by our words, we are what? Condemned. 12th chapter of Matthew, I'll make you read all of it. I could tell you exactly where it is, but I'll make you read a long time to get there. I gave you a clue right there. So I want to see what the Lord said, and I am moving into closing this down now. What was the Lord really telling us in Mark chapter 11? And we're going to read around verses 20 through 24. That's where we're going to park at. Is that all right? He wasn't teaching then. He was just talking to you. <laughs> I was just talking to you then. Now I'm getting ready to teach you. Is that all right? And I'm trusting. I'm teaching on the anointing of God. So if, if you short patience or whatever, that's why you're not getting much right there. It's just like a, a job. Sometimes you got to put the time in to get there. Am I right? You know, old folks used to say, put your time in. Payday's coming after a while. Am I right? Mark chapter 11, verse 20 reads, and in the morning, uh -huh. as they passed by, mm -hmm. they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Go ahead. Y'all know the story. I'm not going to teach Sunday school. We're going to keep it going. Go ahead. And Peter, calling to remember, saith unto him, uh -huh. Master, mm -hmm. behold, the fig tree which thy curseth is withered away. Uh -huh. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, uh -huh. Have faith in God. Read that again. And Jesus answering saith unto them, uh -huh. have faith in God. So Jesus is establishing a principle that's telling us that, look, if you want to see something happen and you want to see it happen the way that you knew it was going to happen because of what you put on it spiritually, by what you said, he said, have what? Faith. faith have what? Faith. Now you ever have that firm persuasion? That conviction, that assurance in God. He said, before you say anything, be assured that God's going to back it up. Did you get that principle? Go ahead. For verily I say unto you. Uh -huh, verily I affirm through my speaking. Uh -huh. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Uh -huh. Be thou removed. Uh -huh. And be thou cast into the sea. Uh -huh. And shall not doubt in his heart. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Doubt in his heart. Let's talk about that. When a person doubts in his or her heart, what they do, they set themselves at variance against them, say, uh, him or herself. You put yourself at variance against yourself. You start battling as an internal conflict within you. Why? Because you're doubting what you already know. A real believer that believes God knows already that with God all so they're not conflicted when an impossibility hit them so doubt had no place to seat itself it can show up but you will cast it 
because you believe God. Are, are you understand me? When you believe God and, and you know that God has sent something to you, it does not matter that it shows up when doubt shows up. You be like, doubt that you're not from God. My God still does the impossible. I said, my God still does the impossible. And he's looking for people who now have that firm persuasion, that assurance that God still specializes in doing the impossible. That's why many are in the situation they're in, because they're in an impossible situation. Go ahead. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. Uh -huh. He shall have whatsoever he said. Go ahead. Therefore, I said unto you, uh -huh. what things soever ye desire, uh -huh. when ye pray, uh -huh. believe that ye receive them, uh -huh. and ye shall have them. Ooh, I feel like teaching right there. Y'all hear me? Anybody all right? Y'all all right in the car? I'm looking at a strange crew tonight. It look like it look like look like I might know y'all. Y'all y'all what, what church y'all go to? Cause it don't look like my people, man. I know, I know y'all got new mask on and all that kind of stuff. But come on now, really? These my people? It's all right. Listen to what God said. Let me teach you, man. Let me teach you and get y'all out of here. Because when, 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 see, what happens is that the Bible teaches us to be careful how we hear, huh? For well, He said, measure your understanding. And when your understanding is cloudy. Are unfruitful. He says, Satan coming, you're getting a visit because you like understanding. I'm trying to take my time tonight to make sure that you leave fully insured. Uh, you're not going to just have liability. I want to make it to heaven. <laughs> but I'm trying to get you to have full coverage. Is that all right? That you could command, that you could decree a thing, and it be established. That God recognizes you, and he knows who you are. Can't never get off the cheap policy. Get off the cheap policy, and go ahead and pay some dividends, and let God know that you belong to him. Is that all right? So in, in verse 23, he says, for very I say unto you, I affirm through my speaking. And then he said that, that, that don't doubt, don't be at variance with yourself. But he said, do this in your heart, in the center of your will. That thing that regulates or commands your actions, your thoughts, or your beliefs. He said, sell that thing right now. And he said, if you'll believe it, that these things are come to pass, you'll have whatsoever you say. So tell your neighbor, six things. A six-step process. Say it again, six things. A six-step process. It's kind of weak in here. Six things. A six-step process. Let's go to Mark 11, 24, a verse that we overlook. Turn your Bibles there. I'll let you turn now. I'm closing down now. Six things. The spiritual illumination came to me. I'm like, whoa. It was a dark moment. Because when the apostle taught it to me, I had missed it all. And I, when I get a nugget, I like for my people to get it. Is that all right? Then the apostle showed me six things in verse 24 that we're missing. Number one, verse, verse Mark 11, 24, he said, Therefore I say unto who? You. What, what? So the first thing that we need to know what, what? We need to be able to identify what? Things. We need to understand when we're praying that we're praying for things. Things cover everything. All things. Everything. All things. So the first thing, our thing must be known. Am I right? So then the second thing is we must have desire for the thing or the things. So we have to have the thing. Somebody said the thing. Then the what? Desire. And then we pray. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Then we what? Pray. And after praying, we employ what? Believing. Then we believe because after we have identified the thing, come on now, and established our desire, and we prayed and we believe, we know we're going to what? Receive. Am I, am I right? But he said it's not enough to receive because you can receive something and somebody take it. 
But he said, I want you to have it. And I want a church that know that God wants you to what? Have it by faith. Tell them you got to have it by faith. Your faith got to increase tonight. You can't, you can't go on with that stuff, you know, and we done shifted. I'm sorry. Did y'all, I, I know y'all probably paying attention to it, but there's a new sign out there on that road. And that, song, that sign has changed the mission of this house. And just in case you miss it, just keep riding till you can get it. Because it's going to look like it's the same place, but it's not the same place. God done changed some things. Is that all right? So my, our things must be established. And if you have to establish that. And in order to establish the things you want God to do, here's what you have to do. Can you have to file for divorce? Ooh, woo. Did Pastor Dave tell me to file for divorce? I'm not the filing for divorce. What are you talking about? Divorce your culture. Divorce your culture. Divorce, divorce your culture. Y'all make sure y'all get me right now. Cause somebody run off and said, Pastor Dave said, file for divorce. No, I said, file for divorce by divorcing your what? Culture. You know why I'm leaving you, don't you? Because Pastor David said that we all need to no, know. Divorce your culture. Divorce critical mindsets. Are y'all hearing me? That's what you have to do. Tell you, you have to divorce it. You'll never overcome Wickedness, witchcraft, all of those things. Dark, you'll never overcome any of that as long as you stay culturally oriented. I'm in Panama City, but Panama City ain't in me. Are y'all hearing me? I say, I ain't in Panama City, but Panama City is not in me. This is the place that he said, go to a place that I'll show you. And I'll be with you, but I'll go before you. And when you understand that, after a while, you don't assimilate to your environment. You make your environment assimilate to who God called you to be. And you begin to pray. Somebody say pray. pray. Say it again, pray. pray. Say it again, you got to pray. But before you pray, you, according to Mark eleven twenty four, 24, you got to establish a what? The thing. And the thing has to have a what? A desire. And then the desire is now you are able to what? Pray. Many people at the end of the night, you drop to your knees and you're automatically praying. Nothing established. Matter of fact, repeat the same thing night after night, most of you. <clears throat> he ain't have to say all that. He ain't, he ain't have to say all that. Overcoming obstacles. How do you overcome obstacles? Four-step process. Set a watch over your mouth. Psalms 141, verse 3. Guard your heart. Proverbs 4 and 23. Control your ear gate. Mark 4 and 24. And watch unto prayer. 1 Peter 4 and 7. That's how you do that. Are y'all hearing me? Understanding that God loves us and he wants us to have his best. And you have to snap out of where you're at. Tell you have to snap out. Tell again, you have to snap out. You find yourself wallowing over into self-pity. Why? Why? It's all right to have a get seminary moment, but after a while, you got to say, come on now. Nevertheless, not my will. But thy will be done. How can you pray the Lord's prayer every night asking him for his will to be done and you never place yourself in a position for him to use you? Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. For your mercy endures forever. You know, when we went to the Catholic school, I'm a product of Catholic school. A lot of time we would have to say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And then every now and then they have you grab your little old rosary and do your little to do, to do, to do. I'm not demeaning anybody's practices because I, 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 I went to Catholic school and I did what we had to do when we were there. Are you hearing me? We went to Mass. We did what we needed to do. Did we speak Latin? We said Latin. 
Because they taught you how to say it and what it meant. Huh? Did we sing? Yeah. Amen. Did we smell the incense? Yes. Are you hearing me? So I've seen that. Why are you bringing that up, Pastor Dave? You the one went to Catholic school, not me. Because you can't be locked in just because you were taught something. Some of you come from Baptist tradition. Some of you come from Methodist tradition. Some of you come from Pentecostal tradition. We came out of Pentecost too. But after a while, you guys just got to come after Christ. You just got to come after Christ. Because I, I, I believe that if you will ever learn 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Because people are going to always try to make your coming to church be foolish. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. How many of you need dunamis power? How many of you need God's authority in your life? How many of you need God to move? But, but God's saying, how can I move when you don't even know the things you desire? And you're praying but you're praying amiss. My message tonight is to get you to increase your faith, but to also make you aware of faith. That God gave you someone who will lead you in a faith walk. But I can't lead you in a faith walk if you're not reviewing, if you're not studying. Well, I went on there and they, they hadn't put it up yet. Well, I don't even know how to use the computer. Well, I, 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 you know, excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. We learn to do what we need to do. Oh, yeah, am, I, am, I, am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? Many of us care not to use computers. But we do. Well, I, 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 us is the wrong pronoun. Many care not to use computer. I understand that it's very necessary in this era to use a computer. If you're going to stay retarded in your past by not learning to advance towards your future, Amen. you will be left behind. Is that all right? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? Then I used to hear people get all caught up how beautiful are the feet. I'm like, nah, they ain't not talking about your naturally feet with eight corns on it. Now, nah, ain't what he's talking about, but we have to get it together. I just tried to leave y'all laughing. Is that all right? Because they you know all preachers ain't got beautiful feet on them. <laughs> They're talking in a spiritual context there. Is that all right? Check some of them out in some sandals and see what you see. <laughs> Give God a praise. Father God, we honor you and we thank you for your word, God. We thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit, his presence, and your illumination of what you wanted your people to have tonight. I thank you for grace and mean with opportunity to be the one to give this word. Continue to bless us, continue to lead us, continue to guide us in your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Give God that praise. God bless you. God bless you. Have a great night. God bless you. <laughs>